Up until this point, we've treated several object detection algorithms like the RCNNs, the YOLO algorithm and its different versions. And now we're going to look at the YOLO X algorithm, which is the one we are actually going to build and deploy in this course. And so we'll start by first understanding what makes the YOLO X better and even faster than the previous algorithms. And then we'll go ahead to understand this code structure right here based on the machine learning development life cycle. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this. Now get into YOLO X, which is the model we are going to be building and deploying in this course. The authors started off with a YOLO version 3 baseline. So the, version, the, the, the feature extractor is based off the YOLO version 3 model. And then instead of using a coupled head, like in this case here, they use a decoupled head. Now recall, we had seen already, like we understood what this head was all about. That's we had this output right here, which we had seen, which was broken up in this way. And then for each cell, we had the object nest, the classes and the bounding boxes. And so that's basically what a coupled head will look like. So here you have height times width and then times now the for the last or the third dimension we have the object nest, we have the classes and then we have the bounding boxes. But for a decoupled head, instead of having just a single like having just all this coupled together, they actually break this up. So we have this output here breaking up into this one and this one. And then this other one is further breaking up into this one and this one. So here we have this head, which is in charge of the classes, this uh, head here for the bounding boxes, and then this head for the objectness. That's to say whether there's an object in that cell or not. It should also be noted that the Yolo X is anchor free. So here we don't use any anchor boxes. That's we do not use any predefined anchor boxes to help the model incorrectly predicting the right bounding boxes. They also use strong data augmentation. Now recall that when trying to train this model, that's when trying to get those values for the filters such that the model can correctly detect objects. We fit this model with hundreds of thousands of data, even millions of the data samples if possible. But then it's possible to increase the available data we have since already creating this kind of data sets isn't very easy. So what we could do is um, implement data augmentation. So data augmentation is all about just say, for example, you have, let's take this off. You have this image right here. You could uh, take this one and then just flip this image. So if you flip this image, you see it's actually now a different image. And then you also, while doing this flipping, you're going to modify the outputs accordingly. And we see how this data now has been augmented. So we've added an extra sample in our data set which is coming from this initial data set so we've taken off the we've taken the sample and then we've created this new sample from the sample without having to manually go and recreate a new sample and thanks to this our model even performs better since now it gets to see many more samples of input images and the corresponding bounding boxes another addition made to the yolo version 3 is the multi positives so here, recall again that we had this, like we're dealing with an anchor free model. So there are no anchor boxes. And so instead of considering a given point, like say this one to be the positive, that is uh, this one, this one point here is responsible for detecting this object. Let's, let's put out the bounding box. So instead of considering that we have only this here, like this is our only positive, we're going to have multi positive. So we're going to have different positives surrounding that center of positive so we have something like this so we're going to define this radius and then we have all this different positive so we're going to suppose now that this one is going to be responsible for detecting the same object and this and this and this and this and so on and so forth so with all this now we gain an improvement in the detection capabilities of the model thanks to the fact that this comes to solve the problem of data imbalance during training to better grasp the concept of data imbalance. Supposing that we have this cell and this cell here responsible for these two objects. And then let's say the cell right here responsible for this object. We see that we have 
uh let's say one two three four five six seven let's say seven by seven we have 49 different cells and then we have only three which contain positive samples the remaining 49 minus 3 that's 46 contain negative samples and this is actually the cause of the data imbalance as now the model gets to see more of the negative samples the model gets to see more of the times where the there is no object in the particular cell and so uh, coming to add up like coming to say this cell we fixed it yes that's the center but we could have other positive surrounding it helps to increase this number of positive samples so now we could have say uh add this up we could have say 18 positive samples now instead of having just three and this now permits the model see the positive samples many more times as the image has been passed through it and then finally they also implement this optimal transport assignments technique which is a more optimal way of generating this output levels right here given that we're using machine learning to solve the problem of object detection it's important to take into consideration the machine learning development life cycle now this life cycle is about outlining the different steps we we'll want to take to ensure that the management of our machine learning project goes on very smoothly now the very first step we want to do is try to understand the problem so we start with the problem understanding in our case we already have this or we've already gone through this as our problem here is that of object detection we're trying to pass in an image like get an image and be able to automatically detect where the objects found on this image now the next step will be to gather the data so this is a step which may be overlooked since so far we've been talking mostly about all this complex neural network models but you should note that these models can only become intelligent if they're fed with the right data and so this step has to be made a priority now the type of data we're dealing with here is basically image input data and output annotations so like if you have this input data here and then you have uh say a bounding box let's let's suppose that we have this object right here and then we have this other person right here like this you'll see that the input that's we have the input the image and then we have the output which is going to be this bounding box positions right here so that's how or that's what our data will look like and then from there we have the model designing we've spoken a lot about this already we're dealing with a yolo x model in our case so we have our yolo x model we now move from there to training and optimization so here we're trying to get those weight values those filter values which permit this model output the right object coordinates when an input image has been passed into the model and this training process is one which obviously takes in the data and the model now from here we want to evaluate our model so we want to see how well we've performed or how well the model we've just trained is performing to see the kind of measures we can take to make this model as performant as possible so here we do the evaluation and then we could always get back to training we could get back to data we could get back to the model designing and so on and so forth so you should know that this isn't uh the kind of process or the kind of life cycle where you just go one two and then right up to the end so yeah sometimes you may get at this point and then have to get back one step or get back two steps to ensure that you're getting the right result now once you've trained this model and then you've obtained the values for the weights which permit the model take in some input and output something very reasonable right here then you could go ahead and test the model and once you test the model you now can deploy this model to be used or consumed by say a web app by a mobile app or some desktop app now getting back to the code we want to thank the authors of this paper first of all for writing the paper making it available and also making the code available so don't forget to start this repository right here and then it should also be noted that what we use in this yellow x repository to create models like this is pytorch so 
we're gonna make use of PyTorch and because of that we're gonna take a look at how a simple PyTorch model can be created and trained so here we have this year you could check this out on pytorch.org site and then you'll see we have data set and data loader so first of all we start by loading the data as you could see right here so start by loading this data uh, pytorch also has many of these different utilities which permit us easily load and transform data and then from here we get into the model you'll see that um, at this point here you have this conf 2d so this is a convolutional layer we've seen already this max pool 2d is the max pool layer we had right here whose role was to down sample or reduce the size of this feature map so you notice that we leave from this feature map and then it gets smaller from this uh, point to this next point and that is thanks to the max pool 2d layer then from there we have an uh, convolutional layer and then this linear layer is actually the fully connected layer which we've seen already so this is how in pytorch we define this kinds of model pytorch is this open source machine learning framework that accelerates the part from research prototyping to production deployment so from here after declaring or defining this model we now get to define the loss function recall the loss function which permits us to update our weights so with this we define the loss function and then we now optimize this weights so yeah let's take a look at this we have the inputs which have been passed into the model and then the outputs are generated we compute the loss and then we update the weights and then this process is repeated over and over now that we have an idea of what code written in pytorch looks like let's get back to our machine learning development life cycle so here we recall we had this life cycle which we had outlined previously and then we're going to show how the code as a yolo x code is related to this life cycle now if you get into the yolo x code the github repository we have this tools folder right here and this yolo x folder so here we have the tools folder and then here we have yolo x now let's get back to this in this tools folder you see here in the tools folder we have train demo eval and export files and in the yolo x folder we have files for data evaluation and models so already we see that the data preparation is done in this folder right here and then the model designing is done in this folder this models folder file in the yellow x folder and then next we have training optimization here is a train.py file then evaluation here we go we have this eval we also have other evaluation utilities in this evaluators right here and then we have testing in this demo file right here demo.py then we have deployment in this export the py now in this export we're going to export our model in a way that we can easily deploy it in say for example a cloud service we are yet to talk about cloud services but for now just understand that this export.py files permit us turn our yolo x model into a format that can be easily used by the final consumers that said we now understand the overall structure of this yolo x repo we also have this utils folder right here now in this utils folder you can see here we have for example a logger now when you carry out the training process there is information you want to log and this file right here takes care of that we also have learning rate scheduler metrics and all these other files right here which are kind of like utilities or util functions we'll be using in training and testing our model